Welcome to this very special edition of That Xbox Show, where we will be going behind the scenes of Axis Animation in Glasgow and here in Seattle at 343 Industries to see how this unique collaboration brought us Halo 4's incredible Spartan Ops. When you create this big universe that people are, are so attached to, you have a lot of responsibility to both yourselves and the, and the people that you're exposing that universe to. Spartan Ops has very much been a, sort of a staging ground for us for the Halo universe. This is something that nobody's done before. One of the main challenges we had on Spartan Ops was the scope of the project. It was much bigger than anything we've taken on in the studio before. We had a lot of ambition for what we wanted to do with Spartan Ops. It was a lot of fun in that you know, it wasn't something that we'd seen before, so let's hope it works. Uh, and there was a lot of, hey, if we're gonna be the first ones to do this, let's make sure we do it right. We found that the, the Halo community in particular has always enjoyed co-op and always enjoyed that social experience. And so the question for us was how do you take some of those co-op experiences that have been around in the past in Halo and, and sort of give them a, a new spin? And we looked at what our fans wanted when they played co-op in, in the previous Halo titles and we really wanted to find a way to incorporate that in the vision of Spartan Ops. We sort of drew a lot of inspiration from where Halo had been in the past with the campaign experience as well as Firefight. Really the only complaints we ever got was that there was no narrative structure in the Firefight mode. A lot of the campaign storylines and a lot of just the overarching stories of our characters are one of the main attractions to this game. Literally more than 50% of our audience only really cares about campaign and story. And so this was a way to give those guys uh, some of the, the sort of content structure and cadence uh, that their multiplayer brethren had been getting for, you know, basically a decade. So a decision that we made early on with Spartan Ops was to establish um, these two squads that were a part of uh, the Infinity. And one would be the CG series, that being Majestic Squad, and then Crimson Squad being um, this team that you and your friends take control of within the playable missions. The reason we decided to create that separation was that we wanted players to be able to take their own personalized Spartans into the missions themselves and have that sense of, of deep connection with their, their playable character. And because we knew that we were going to be delivering the episodes in pre-rendered CG, it was obviously not possible to be able to show your Spartans, so that's how we created kind of a mirror um, for your experience in the show. One big thing we want to do is make the Halo universe even bigger for gamers. Uh, fans of the novels have had lots of extra characters to enjoy and to be fans of, and gamers have really only known a very small subset of that. So Spartan Ops was our first chance to go, look, here are all these other cool people. It was exciting to the team because we rooted so much of the art direction in what was sort of canonically outside of the game specifically. We were trying to pick out um, out of the fiction, the books, the, the movies, the TV series, etc., etc., to find to find things that we could actually give to the player who don't generally get those experiences. People who played Halo 1 to 3 don't really build the understanding of what is a really exciting universe that lives underneath it. On the flip side, where, where this team gets excited and, and, and the things that drive us is when we don't actually have a strong understanding of some of these particular elements. You will see our heads kind of spark up in excitement when franchise sends their understanding of a particular world or universe or character and it's very brief. Um, that's where we live. That's what drives us. It's creation. This allows us to tell many stories that touch on the novels, that touch on Forward into Dawn. And we really got excited about the idea of delivering an episodic experience that would give players a reason to come back each week and experience an ongoing narrative. Axis is an um, animation studio in Glasgow and they're responsible for a lot of game trailers you see out there. As a Scotsman myself, I was born and raised in Edinburgh, um, I, I, it was simple nepotism. And, uh, what happened, man? No, um, I, I was excited when we, when, when we actually got the reel from Axis, but ultimately the, the reel only got to us because it was a, such an exceptional quality. One of the decisions in going with Axis Animation as our partner on the, on the Spartan Ops series was really seeing the passion that they brought to the material. Um, and the fact that we, we both had this shared vision, sometimes kind of a crazy vision of, of what we were trying to create on a, on a relatively um, compressed time frame. This is different from the projects Axis normally uh, undertakes in terms of its size. That required 
all manner of improvements and growth in both technical infrastructure and in terms of our approach to the project from a production perspective. We were forced to work smart in order to get it done. It's been really exciting to see them adapt very, very quickly to some of the work they're getting downstream from us, and I, I think they, they took it and owned it. it uh, the relationship was fantastic, and they did a great job. The episodic structure of Spartan Ops was really sort of determined by the way it was going to be used for gameplay. In terms of production, it worked really well for us because we had nice sort of bite-sized chunks to look at. We were looking at five minutes at a time, and within that, it allowed us to, to shape each five minutes with a beginning, a middle, and an end, so you were able to sort of let the viewer hopefully want to come back again to see the next part. It was driven by the requirements of the game, but it actually worked well in terms of storytelling as well. We're able to kind of leverage their expertise in, in cinematics and we're really work closely with them. It was quite uh, liberating to be able to tell something over a longer format. Usually the game trailers and things we do, we're always trying to tell a story, but we usually only got about two and a half minutes to tell it. They understood what we were looking for at a very uh, sort of deep uh, visceral level. There was a real synergy there between our two teams, you know, we just kind of thought alike and, and creatively we were on the same page and so it just made the, the partnership uh, feel very natural. This project was just the biggest thing we've ever done. It meant that we had to come at it in a very unique way. They're able to bring a special something to the, the process that, that enhances it and makes it more than the sum of its parts. It got to the point where we felt that we could really trust Axis and, and the creative decisions that, that they uh, were making and, and driving in, in some of the uh, aspects of the show. I think it's quite a bold move on their part to actually do something more like a TV season. We're building the components and then literally airing them even as the rest of the series is, is being completed. This is a relatively um, untraveled path in the, uh, the game industry. I think the episodes were, were well received in terms of being something that people really were able to enjoy before moving on to the gameplay element. The content demands of creating um, 50 missions that sort of run alongside this series were, were huge and, and so we had to make really smart decisions about how can we take some of the content that already exists in the game and you know change that and tweak it to be reused. Um, you know, how can we design new spaces that can be reused across multiple missions and, and, and support different setups, different objectives that really change the play experience uh, you know, on, a, on a basic level so that it is compelling to go back and play a second or a third time. And that was part of the learning process that we went on as we built out the missions. The, the CG was always working well, but we got the story to work better and we were able to make more compelling events. Um, I think that if we do anything similar in the future, um, and we're definitely planning on, on doing more things with story in the future, um, that we've learned a lot from that process. Where you're sort of crossing over these two mediums, you've got this linear medium and an interactive medium in, in the missions, is finding those, those bridging moments where you can cross over and, and have kind of meaningful touch points that make the, the player feel like they're having an impact on the universe and they're having an impact on the story. We think we did a really good job of making the characters that you're observing and witnessing and sort of interacting with feel uh, relatable and, and make you feel like an important part of that team without you know, implicitly stating who you are as the player. We learned a lot about kind of the different like, missions that, and the game experiences we put together and we can take a lot of learning on how to make those really compelling and kind of tune those to make sure that we have a, you know, a, an awesome experience for gamers. Just as a fan, I wanted it to count. I, I wanted a reason to come back, and you know that reward of moving the universe forward was a big part of that. You are going to see characters returning, you are going to see characters have really meaningful impact on the universe, and we're not going to sort of ring fence stories and locations in the way that we have in the past, but we'll also be seeing new characters, uh, because we've learned this is how you bring them on stage, this is how you introduce them to fans, and this is how you get people to love them and care about them. So we are opening ourselves up for the future. We want to continue to tell these stories for years. It allows us to show the depth of these characters and it just allows us to open the doors to this universe and to continue to build off of its strong foundation. 